So you've got all the biology stuff. You've got this weird Freudian aggression turned inward, which just feels right, but you can't do modern science on it. You've got this whole world. How do you begin to put this world and that world together? And the critical link turns out to be stress. Stress is the intersection of the two in a very interesting domain. Okay, depression is a genetic disorder. What do I mean by that? Depression has some degree of heritability. Depression tends to run in families. Depression runs more reliably as you look at closer and closer relatives, and you eventually look at identical twins, and if one of them has depression, the other has a 50% <coughs> chance. Full siblings who are not identical twins, 25% chance, half sibling, about 8%, person off the street, about a 2%, 50% chance when they share the identical genes. What does that do? That tells you this is a disorder that has a genetic component. What does that also tell you? If you've got 50% likelihood, if you've got all the genes in common, and you've got a 50% chance of not getting the depression, it tells you genes are important, but they're not more important than any other component. So genes and depression are not about inevitability, they're about vulnerability. So what is the vulnerability about? A few years ago, people discovered a particular gene that's really relevant to whether or not you get depression. What was exciting about that? It was a very clear finding. It has since been replicated. What else was exciting about it? It made sense. This was not some weirdo gene having something to do with how your big toe functions. This was a gene having something to do with serotonin. And this was a gene relevant to this whole reuptake, pumping business, all of that. The main point of it is this gene comes in two different flavors. Each one of us has one of the two versions. And you immediately get this prediction, one of the versions, by all logic, should be predisposing to depression. One of them is the one that should get you in more trouble. So what does it look like when you go and study it? first paper that reported this a few years ago, and this, I suspect, is going to wind up being viewed as the most important paper in biological psychiatry for a quarter of a century. This was this massive study where a bunch of researchers looked at 17,000 kids growing up in New Zealand, following them year after year, and looking at the genetic makeup of these individuals, and then asking, in their early 20s, who's got problems with major depression? And then asking this critical question, what does it have to do with this gene? Does the version of that gene that gets you into trouble, by all logic, is that going to set you up for more of a depression? Are you more at risk for depression if you've got the bad version of the gene? And back comes the finding, which is, no, mm -hmm. it doesn't increase your risk. You look here, and what's your likelihood of depression? And you got the good version, and it's this likely, and you got the bad version, and it's this likely, doesn't make a difference. Unless something else is going on. Unless you have a history of exposure to major stressors. And what you were able to do is quantify how many major stressors somebody has had during their childhood, their development, and that involves parental divorce, and physical abuse, and death of family member, all that sort of thing. And what you see is, in the folks who have the good version of the gene, as you have more and more of a history of major stressors, your risk of depression goes up, absolutely. Now you look at the people with the bad version of the gene, and as you have more and more of a history of stress, your risk of depression does this. And when you look at the major history of stressors, a 30-fold difference in the likelihood. This is not about Ooh, genes control our brains and genes control our behavior. This is a gene that is relevant to how readily we pick ourselves up after life has dumped us on our rear ends, how readily we recover from stressors. What's the final piece of that story? Glucocorticoids regulate the function of this gene. All the pieces fall into place there wonderfully logical, and suddenly you have a way of taking this whole world of psychological components of stress and tying it into all that biochemistry, wonderfully integrated model. Okay, so in lots of ways, this is where the field is at at this point. 
and what should mostly have come through here amid all this minutia and factoids and all of that is the role of stress and the intersection of the biology and the psychological stuff and childhood as a very important time to imprint how vulnerable you are to depression for the rest of your life. But again, the single thing I want to emphasize over and over implicit in everything on that left side of the board there, which is this is not oh, pull yourself together, we all get depressed. This is as real of a biological disorder as is diabetes. 